What is up ladies and gentlemen, how's it going dry here and welcome back to the channel today We are playing way of the hunter, but unfortunately It isn't live because as I was recording this video, you know We're just setting out enjoying our time Usually the way that I wanted to do it is if I came across a herd that had pretty, you know Promises or anything that was going to potentially be entertaining that that was then when I was going to start uh, Recording myself and just going through it but throughout the entire video here, my mic was actually muted. Uh, but as you can see on the screen right now, we actually came across an elk. And so to put yourself in the position that I was in, basically, I decided that I was going to spawn at our fast travel to Dustin's cabin. I was going to work my way up kind of like northeast, I believe is the direction that it is, to head over to the bigger lake. I actually don't know the name of the lake, uh, but I was going to head over to the bigger lake that's in the mountains and see if I couldn't see a, a herd of elk that I was following the day before. That had a three star mature that I let go just to see if I could, you know, maybe see if he maybe at least turned into a four star and then take him down. Um, but throughout this entire gameplay, like I said, Mike is muted, unfortunately. But while everything is going off here on the start, I want to tell you guys, if you guys have not played Way of the Hunter, if you enjoy hunting, if maybe you want to find a game that's open world adventure, you know, you don't even necessarily have to hunt in this game, man. It's basically Pokemon. If you guys enjoy Pokemon, it's based. I know that's a horrible analogy, but basically just going around and seeing if you can't find just the biggest animal that you can get your hands on but at this point is when i was able to you know kind of glass out a little bit and actually see that they were over there and uh it's all about getting closer as we can and trying to see if we couldn't get a decent shot but like i said unfortunately the mic wasn't working throughout the entire video it's not that it wasn't working i just disabled the mic in obs which was a complete failure on my part so we spent honestly maybe a good hour chasing this herd maybe not a full hour but it was right there close to it it was a good bit of time and the entire time throughout this entire video i'm thinking to myself dude i'm just gonna this herd's gonna get away from me i'm gonna lose my chance to take out a five star mature and then the next day this dude's gonna be dead you know he's gonna die of old age and i'm not gonna be able to get my hands on another one for quite some time but all this was completely random it wasn't, like I said, this wasn't stalking the same herd that I've been following. At least I don't think this was a herd that I've seen before because most of the other ones that I've seen have been a little bit up north. And this was my first time kind of coming from down south up to this area. And that's why when it comes to this game, man, stalking herds in this game is so important. Trying to get your hands on different ones, trying to thin the herd out a little bit. And so actually... All the animals that we're seeing up there, all the elk that we're seeing, they're not even the full herd. I'm thinking to myself, this is, you know, everyone hanging out on the mountains up here. You know, I'm scoping in, trying to see if I can't get a little bit of view on them, a little better view than what I get uh, throughout the binos here. And uh, this is when I'm like, all right, I need to start getting a little bit closer to see if I can at least get eyes on with what they are. But as you can see, we do have a hill over us with a little bit of a ravine, and that's where the other part of the herd was that I had no idea. And this is another part where it just comes into play so important that you do have to play, especially when you're trying to get on a herd of elk. You have to go so slow to these guys. And even here, technically, I'm moving way too fast, and you guys are going to see that in just a minute. But the whole situation here is that there's a two-star mature up on the mountain. I'm going to try my best to see if I can't get close enough and put myself into a position to where maybe I can go ahead and take a shot from him from the front. The way that he's turned, unless he was to move, I would have to go all the way down the ravine a little bit to the right to try to get a good broadside shot on him. So at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to go up left, try to keep the high ground to get a better angle on him and then see if I can't take a shot from the front. So these are the like I said, these are the only group of elk that I've seen so far have no idea that there are still any down below in the ravine and uh closing in on 300 yards once you get to i think usually for me if you're not playing it super slow and really just walking as slow as you can once you get within like 200 yards of these elk they spook so easily so easily but we have the win perfectly in our favor you know unless we get too close these guys aren't going to smell us out you know, we have another two-star mature over here. He has a little bit of a smaller rack. And I, at this point, I was debating whether or not I should take him out or I should take the one out that I was originally going for because if he had that smaller rack and was still a two-star mature, then obviously he doesn't have the best genetics. So I really want to try to get rid of the worst genetic animals that I think they are in this game to let that herd grow. But right up in here, you guys are going to see that I actually spook this group of elk. 
And uh, so I'm trying to get a little bit closer here. We're within like 200 yards, but we're actually within like 150 yards of the other group of elk that are down in that ravine. And as we start getting closer here, I'm to a position now to where, you know, I could really go ahead and take that shot. And luckily I didn't because right here I spooked them. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a lot more than originally, you know, what I thought. And I don't know if you saw it run across the bottom of your screen there, but you could see the size of the rack on this guy. And once I got the binos on him and was able to see that this guy is a five-star elk, my entire night changed. At this point, I was like, I'm not getting off because if this herd would have left and it was only that two-star mature, I was like, all right, it's 2 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and hop off. And of course, because this is the first one that I've seen, I'm sitting here debating to myself whether or not I should take that shot you know, it, it's it's a good bit of distance. At this point, he's working up to 400 yards. So with the gun that I have, you know, you're not going to really get that great of a shot unless you hit perfectly from this range, especially with an elk. But as you can see here, I decided, you know what, we're going to take that shot right there. Center mass, at least, you know, I'm thinking that it's going to hit the lung. But the way that he's running off in this way here, at first, I thought this is a good hit. He could be going down, but that trot of him leaving, I knew that right then and there that I did not hit a good shot. I might at least penetrated a lung barely, but I wasn't able to bring him down. Now, at this point, like I said, there is no getting off. You know, I see these guys. We have another open spot here. They're still running. Uh, to, you know, I pop up the binos here to see if I can't see where they are. And they're actually over here towards the left. You can see them running there trying to get away. Um, and right over that ledge there is actually the lake that I was originally going to go for. So... I know exactly where they're going. I know that if we have a five-star mature there, I'm not getting off of this game until that dude is taken down or at least until I have ran him completely out of the reservation. So you guys, I don't know if you're, I'm not too sure if you know if you guys have been to the edge of the map yet, but you can actually run them off to where you can still take a shot at them, but you're just not going to be able to go out there too far to get them. But at this part, small amount of blood, I was like, man... We, we, we could have just goofed off here. We could have just lost our chances. But really, you know, going back and thinking about it, we did lose a star on our hunting rating. But the fact that we shot them and they went down that ravine there could have been honestly a good thing. I think if they would have went towards the right into the thicket, it would have been a little bit harder for me to get back onto them. But so this is where we're having to really kind of readjust the situation and get back to a better spot. And this is where things start to go down up in this area here. So you guys can see that right over this ledge here is where the lake is that, like I said, originally is where I was wanting to go. I'm figuring at this point, maybe they're somewhere down here. So I'm just kind of glassing out, trying to see if I can't get eyes on anything. Um, there's actually a different group of elk all the way down there. Um, they're a little bit towards the right. But once we got that alerted male there, I decided, you know what? We're going to stand absolutely still. We're not going to move a single muscle until hopefully that signal goes away. And as you can see down there, this is when I spotted a second group of elk. And they actually, at this point, decided to go ahead and turn away and continue, you know, going off and doing their own thing. Um, but we have an alerted elk here. If you guys do run across a group of elk, if they are alerted, if they're not spooked and they're alerted, usually if you stand completely still, it's kind of takes in a little bit of, you know, the IRL hunting with elk that if you stay completely still, uh, most of the time, they're not going to spook off and definitely, of course, unless they see you. Um, but so we start moving up super slow. I'm like, we're within 160 yards of this guy. Of course, if we do anything stupid, they're going to spook super easily. I'm trying to see if I couldn't get eyes back down there, down there just to make sure that that group of elk that ran away wasn't the, uh, wasn't the herd that I was after. Um, unfortunately, or fortunate enough, it wasn't. So these guys are right down here. We're within, like I said, we're within 200 yards. We have the wind on our side. We're not blowing, you know, anything towards them. So if we play this out really, really well, we have a good chance of being able to move up really close to this guy and then being able to get a perfect shot. But overall, guys, if you just look at the scenery of this game, it is absolutely incredible. The guys who made this game did an incredible job with that as far as the immersion of putting yourself in there and just, of course, the overall scale. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but there's been a few instances where I'm like, I wonder how long it would actually take for me to.
to go to the lowest part, the south end of the map, and then just start going straight north, how long it would take to drive across the map. Because usually doing some of these missions in the campaign, it takes you a good five or ten minutes just to get there with all the turns and everything else. So this is an absolute massive map. It's a beautiful map. I haven't gotten the chance to play Transylvania yet because I really wanted to put a good bit of hours into this map to see what I can do. But here soon, I think I'm going to make the switch over just to kind of check things out. I did visit it one time to see that you do bring over the same weapons that you have and stuff to that map. So uh, now at this point, guys, we are getting super close to this group of elk. They are with definitely 100% within shooting range. We just have to get to a point to where we can see them. And right here over this ledge is where things start to happen. I'm starting to kind of glass out a little bit. I haven't heard them anymore, and I didn't hear any trees breaking. If you spook animals in this game, if you haven't played it, tree, you can hear the branches and stuff snapping in the background as they run away. Um, but, you know, we are using the hunter sense, and we haven't got any bubbles and stuff on screen to say that they've uh, been spooked. And that call that he just made right there, it was like, you know, he's calm. They have no idea that we're here. He's 109 yards out. Like, we are in a situation that we can, you know, I, even looking back on this now, man, this, this, it, you get into some, some, some situations in this game where it is exciting. And this was definitely one of them for me, especially if you know you have a five star in that herd and you're able to get this close to him. Um, I wish, I know there is a mission out there that you have to be within like 96 yards of a elk and take him down. I wish that this would have been. Uh, part of that mission but unfortunately it wasn't but still we're moving up here i decided that we're gonna crawl i'm not gonna even take the chance of him hearing me by just walking and once i realized that we had a female elk right there to the left of us i was like maybe she had eyes on me and right there you can see that she did and so i don't think obviously that she didn't notice me she's still calm when it came to her behavior so we're still in a position that we're good but at this point here this is when i kind of really came to realize that even if you spook animals in this game, if you can put yourself in a good position, a lot of the time is not all of the time. I'd say maybe about half the time they do kind of like make their way back towards the direction that they were originally spooked from. Um, but we have eyes on a female here. I'm not at this point 100% too sure what the terrain's looking like below her to where their other elk are. But in just a minute, I make a move to the left that somehow pushed the head of my character up to where I was able to then see the rest of the herd like you'll see right here in just a second but i'm just trying to make sure that her temperament's not going to change because she's looking directly at me she's not moving at all she still has eyes on me i'm thinking that if i move at least a little bit she's going to somehow see me she's going to become alerted and then there's going to go another chance and then as you can see there my head went up and i had eyes on the entire herd they're still calm so i'm like you know what they think that i'm something else they're curious they're not really spooked i'm going to move up a little bit and you can see right there towards the right, there's our five-star mature. Man, even even coming back and watching this for the first time since it happened, it's uh, it, it's crazy. I mean, it, it's a game. We shouldn't be this excited for something that's in a video game, but we are. And uh, I debated whether or not I should take that shot there. But I figured that since these guys are calm, they're not necessarily spooked, I can wait a minute till this guy's by himself. Now, if you look... Honestly, to the left there, you'll see that there is an elk in there that has deformed antlers. He has uh, he has on his right side, his, uh, his rack's a little bit longer. But right here is when I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a shot. I got a pretty decent broadside shot here that I'm going to go for. And just like that, there goes the shot. They get a little bit stuck on each other, but I mean, with him standing beside everyone else, you can just see how big of a rack this dude has. I mean, Jesus Christ. And this is one of the best parts of the game right here. When you're in the mountains, you're able to look down on a bunk that you can see. You can see the blood coming out of him. We know we got a good hit just by the way he's walking. And I'm just kind of making sure that I don't lose, you know, sight of him so I can see where he drops because I'm going to run straight over there and check this guy out. And once he comes out of this grass here and goes around this corner, he starts slowing down. And this is when right here, this is this is when he's going down. One of the best feelings in the game right here. If you guys haven't got the chance to get on a five-star animal yet, just wait. I mean, it, it's going to happen. I would, Like I said, I was on here just messing around. Wouldn't even necessarily hunting. Just more or less going on an adventure. You can see my celebratory dance right there. But, uh, I mean, it happens. It happens sometimes at the moments that you're not really thinking that it's going to happen. But uh, we go ahead. We make our way over there just to check him out a little bit. See what he looks like. 
We got a full sprint, too. We're not worried whether or not anyone else is coming back. I wanted to play a little bit slower here because I'm thinking that if I fall down this hill and I lose consciousness, I'm not even going to come back and find this guy. Like, it's, that, it, Can you imagine hunting in the mountains, taking down an animal that's you know a four-star, five-star, and then on the way to him, you actually kill yourself, you lose consciousness, and you have to make that journey all the way back there. But fortunately enough, it didn't happen to me. We were able to uh, completely secure that kill there. But as we're walking up to him, I just want to say, guys, like I said, this is the first time that I've recorded a video to where I've actually commentated the entire thing. I come back from a time of Call of Duty from, you know, 2012 of just doing straight live commentaries um, and then transitioning into actually, you know, talking and then cutting it up to where there's no imperfections. So I know that if you guys stuck out to the end of this video, there's been a lot of hiccups and stuff. But uh, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching you guys can see here as we move up on him, I'm getting rid of all these blue markers just so that way it doesn't kind of like kill the view of him. Sun's starting to go down. Land looks absolutely beautiful. And of course, my five star has his antlers embedded in the ground to where we can't really see him. So we couldn't really get the full scale of this guy here. And before I go ahead and claim him, I'm just walking around him. I'm trying to take a view. I was honestly disappointed, man. I was really disappointed that, of course, the first time that this happens to me is on a five star. But I mean, these are small things that can be fixed here, you know, pretty, pretty soon. Um, but I did decide to go ahead and try to put myself in a position to get, of course, a few photos. But you guys can see the hit shots here. 94% um, genetics, five star and a four star hunt rating, which wasn't the best. We lost 215 pounds of meat, but uh, that's not too bad. I'll take that all day, every day. We're not really worried about the meat. We're going to go ahead and taxidermy this guy and put him up into a uh, good spot. And uh, you guys can see that here. But thank you guys very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy the video, maybe leave a like. And uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Maybe the next time I won't actually, uh, you know, turn my mic off while I'm recording at night. And uh, we'll, we'll actually be able to actually get the live reactions of everything that goes down. But once again, Thank you guys very much for watching the video. And until the next one, I hope you guys have a very good and safe day. See ya.